So I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is the fourth one in the Codex Alera series by Jim Butcher. This one is called Captain's Fury. I read this as a buddy read with Sarah from Books and Junk and we both definitely enjoyed this one. I think it was the best one in the series so far and I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars because I read it as part of the Rainbow Thon and I really really enjoyed it. I read it in like two days I believe and it was just so fast paced, so action packed and it was just what I wanted to read at the time. It was fun, it was high fantasy and it was just a big epic adventure with lots of my favourite characters returning to the story. So let's get into what this one is all about. This is set in a world where magic is the norm and everyone has these things called furies which are basically like these elemental spirits and they have certain elements that they have a kind of affinity for. So you can get water furies, you can get fire furies, you can get earth furies, etc, etc. If you are very proficient with a fury or furies and you can use them then it's more likely that you are a noble or you are in a position of power. Some keep the true extent of their furies secret if they want to live a more peaceful life or they want to just hide their powers for some reason. There are three major races in the book that we follow. The first are the Alerans, who are obviously the main humans within this world. Most of our central characters are from the Alaran race. We then have the Marat race, which are basically this kind of tribal race of horse warriors and warriors generally. They're really interesting, they definitely have their own cultures and their own sort of ideas and customs that they believe in. They're quite different to the Alerans. And then finally we have the Canim who are a completely different type. They're kind of like these wolfish people and they're often seen as the bad guys but they're actually all very very intelligent. Some of them are actually more reasonable than some of the Alerans and some of them are more intelligent than some of them. So it's a really interesting blend of these three cultures that we get to encounter throughout the course of this book. So the story once more follows our main character Tabby who is a young man by now and he has been taking on these leadership roles in the last book and this book. He's been masquerading as Scipio who is a young captain leading parts of the war band in the war that is ongoing currently against the Canim. The war against the Canim has been going on for quite a while and Alera are at full strength, they're ready to attack and hopefully to win. Tabby is stuck leading his troops and soldiers whilst all around him. People are jealous of his position and people do not trust him and others are envious of those who do trust him and who are strongly and fiercely loyal to him. He's in a fair few deadly and close call situations across the book but this doesn't stop him from showing his resourcefulness and determination and he's definitely a fun character who I find it easy to like and easy to cheer on. Isana is Tavi's aunt and she has basically been like a mother to him throughout the whole of his life because his mother died when he was very young. She's one of the closest people to him but she's kept a secret for his whole life that she thought would really damage him and and hurt or upset him if he were to know it. She's very reluctant to tell Tabby about this but she knows that the time is now and she's going to have to reveal it to him. The secret has been the worry of her life. She's tense about how he's going to react to it. She's also the pawn in another person's game. She is actually working for Lady Aquitaine who is a rather nasty character that we've encountered before. She's quite cunning and sly and she has to do her bidding in order for Lady Aquitaine's help in one of the previous books. So she is kind of allied with her whether she wants to be or not, which she definitely doesn't. Overall, Asana is put into some tough predicaments in the book but she actually relishes these and once they're done with and she has unburdened herself of the secret, she actually really comes into her own and she manages to expand her powers and expand herself as a person, which I loved seeing her development in this book. Then we have Amara who is a cursor, which is basically a helper or servant of the First Lord who is the ruler of the land. She is working for Gaius who is the First Lord as she has done for most of her life. She's a very clever character who knows how to act very quickly and get the job done. She's competent and she's definitely one of the best fighters who is out there which is why she is a great help to the First Lord and she's one of the best flyers out there by far. She is a great friend to Gaius and she trusts him and is loyal to him and believes in him and she's happy to accompany him on a very mysterious sort of undertaking of a journey that they go on in this book. Despite all of that she has a secret 
which is to do with the man that she loves. She always tries to fulfil her role and her position to Gaius at all times, but this thought always lingers in the back of her mind of the man that she is in love with and the relationship that she longs for and wishes for, how it could have been if things were different, would she be married to this man living a peaceful life? There's always that ongoing question in her mind, so it's an interesting character to follow in that she is so loyal to Gaius, but actually she does have other dreams besides this, and she's following it because she has to, not necessarily because she wants to as much as she did in the first few books, now she has other interests that have come into the story as well, so that was great to see. Then we have Marcus. Marcus is a member working within the troops, and he is working with Tavi. He is a man who has a very shady past. He's actually not necessarily the man you think he is, and due to some of the events within the previous books, his earlier alliances with the Aquitines may now be tested. He's definitely a dangerous character to get on the wrong side of, and his story interested me a lot more in this book than it had in previous books, for sure. Kitai was once again one of my favourite characters. She is a member of the Marat, and she is a great friend to Tavi. She's quick and sharp in all senses of the word. She definitely is a great fighter, but she's also highly intelligent, and she has a great sense of who she is and what she believes in, and she understands the ways of her culture really, really well, so... The Mysteries of the Alarans is quite funny to see. She has some moments where she comes out with these really great lines that just make me laugh and smile because she just gets to the root of things straight away and she has no messing around or brushing over a subject. She just goes straight to the root of it all and the core of it all and she's a great character to follow for that reason. She's fun and I imagine she's the sort of person that would be easy to get along with and be friends with and yeah, you wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of her though. Finally, we have Gaius himself, who is the first lord of this whole land. He deserves a fair mention because he's one of the most powerful people in the land, and he has many, many furies under his command, and a long time of ruling and experience. He is a fairly old man by the point of this story. The events of the ongoing conflicts from the two sides have finally forced him to act, and take matters into his own hands. At some point, his frailty was really, really well shown, and clearly shown to the reader but also at times we saw this powerful man who had been ruling so it was strange to get these two juxtaposed ideas of this man who was both very frail and sort of getting older and older but also had this immense power under his command and he did some pretty epic things so I really enjoyed seeing his character in this one as well. On the whole this book was just the type of book that I thought was great for a read-along. It was fast, it was fun, it was furious and it was magical which is everything I love in a book and Jim Butcher's writing style for these books is definitely really evolved and really so much fun compared to the first few Dresden books which I feel are a lot clunkier. This series feels very well formed and very easy to get through and I definitely enjoyed this so I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It was fun, it was fast, it was just what I wanted and I would love to hear your thoughts if you guys have read the series because I am really enjoying it and I'm glad that I got back into reading it again. I'm planning to read the next one next month as well and I can't wait to give it a try and see how the story continues and then read the sixth one in August hopefully and finish it up and see what I think of the overall series. So can't wait to continue. Let me know your thoughts if you've read it and thank you all for watching. I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the